I went to college and I got my degree. And I got my degree in fine arts. And where I went to school in Rochester, New York, I stayed for a couple years and I did computer graphics, still in line with the art. And then my best buddy from college moved to Washington and said, come on down. And so I moved to Washington, and that was 27 years ago. And that's when the journey really began. I got a temp job, but I got into a travel agency, and I worked really hard, and I did the very best that I could do. I got into the accounting department, supported the controller. I got into the sales department. I supported the director of sales, did proposals, I learned and learned and I learned. I did whatever it took to learn the business. And then shortly afterwards, a client who became aware of my abilities called me and said, I'm moving to this new company. It's an international development company. It's a nonprofit organization and I need you to manage my travel. The travel program of bringing thousands of people from the former Soviet Union, ironic, but this was a while ago, bringing all these people over was through government contract, and they wanted me to help organize this. And I knew that I would do my very best. I would learn. I would learn the business again. So I started that job. And progressively, over the past 21 years in that organization, I went from travel manager to senior business manager, which meant that I was in charge of multi-million dollar divisions that were government contracts, that were supporting major economic development uh, functions across the world, globally. It was amazing. Um, and in that position, I taught myself everything about the computers. I didn't know how to use Excel. In all those years, I didn't know how to use Excel. I didn't really know very much about Microsoft Word at the time. But over those years, I learned, and I also had incredible relationships with my supervisors who saw my potential. But again, it was all about you know, my mind of working hard and, and doing the best that I could do. I rose in that company to the point where I was at the almost sea level. And I don't know if you know sea level, that's one of those terms they use now. That's where the CFOs and the chief information officers and you know COOs are all running these organizations. I worked with them directly. But what was important for me was the relationships in that job. I would not have been able to move the way that I did if it weren't for the relationships that I created. And after a while, I have to say that it became harder. I knew something wasn't connecting. The relationships were there, but the work that I was doing, as much as it was so wonderful, it wasn't connecting anymore. But it was about those relationships, and it was about working with people. And so basically, in 2014, I, I was really becoming miserable. I wasn't quite sure, but I knew what was happening. My heart was telling me, you need to do something different. You've, you've gotten this far, but you need to do something different. You're not living your life purpose. And I had a conversation with one of my great friends who lived in Bangkok, Thailand. And I told him, I came across this information about coaching and something resonated. <clears throat> and I was doing some research around it. And again, it kept resonating with me. And so he said, well, that's really ironic. Because guess what? I have a coach. And I'm going to put you in contact with this coach. And so I called him up in Bangkok, Thailand. I spoke to him. It was great English guy, young guy from Bangkok who lived there for many years. And what he did is he started taking me on the journey of remembering who I am, what all of my gifts and what all of my strengths and what all of my talents were. 
And we started moving in the direction of me leaving this job, thinking about coaching as a career. And I was absolutely petrified. And I was afraid I was going to fail, because I was succeeding. But I'm telling you, I was miserable. Miserable. So, like divine intervention, at the point when I was about to start thinking about leaving, an old boss called me. And she said, John, I want you to come work for me at this company. And it's bigger, and it's better. And I'm going to give you more money. And I'm going to give you more benefits. And I'm going to give you the world. What do you think I did? Said no. Nope. <laughs> I was too afraid, remember? <laughs> and I said, how can I pass that up? Because isn't that what this is all about? Remember what Bob talked about? He said, doing something that was meaningful for you. That's the theme here. So guess what? I took that job. I took that job. And I worked night after night. And I worked day after day. And I worked weekend after weekend. I was not with my family. I was not with my friends. And you thought I was miserable before? <laughs> I knew I needed to leave. But my next step was to get into a training program with coaching. I just said, OK, I'm going to test this out before I cut the cord. And I started the training course. Literally, one year from tomorrow will be one year anniversary of me starting that. So I'm, I'm the newbie here. But imagine this cycle that I've gone through. So tomorrow will be one year. The day, thank you. <laughs> but the interesting thing was is that in the first class, here we are, all of us wanting to be coaches. In the first class, the instructor asked who wanted to be coached. And so I raised my hand on the screen. And she said, what do you want to focus on today? And I said, I need to decide if I'm going to leave my incredible, lucrative job. And she said, so what do you want to leave with today? What is it? And I said, I want to have an answer. And in 20 minutes, 20, with this instructor who was a master coach, I went through the reasons why I should leave, and I went through the reasons why I shouldn't. And when she heard the story, and she picked up on my apprehension, she finally said to me, the last thing, who's going to save John? Who's going to save John? Because she heard how miserable I was and how un just dissatisfied I was. But when she said that to me, the light bulb went off. Because I realized I was the only one. I was the only one who was going to save me from this situation. And literally that next day, I went into the office and I had a great relationship with this boss. I had already told her about coaching. And I just said, Denise, I can't do this anymore. Journey. And when some people talk about transition, they think of kind of moving from one place to another. There's another definition of transition. And it's moving and transforming. It's, it's an event that results in a transformation. For me, this has been an absolute transformation. And what's been interesting is I've often said that sometimes you need to move things out in order to open up the space for things to come in. 